Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Three Fates Decide. My name is Liz, and I am your solo host for this episode. This time, I'm going to be discussing light novels. What are light novels, and why am I so interested in reading them? You think you know what we're going to talk about. And welcome back to Three Fates Decide. It just sounds more dramatic that way. All right, so this week we are going to be talking about... But just when you least expect it, we changed the game. One Will Smith slot, Chris Rock. I mean, we always celebrated Easter. You're part of the Half-Blood Prince. So we're going to do another free talk, freestyle thing, no planned discussion. At the end of the day, only one thing matters. We decide. But we're going to hit the, the main highlights. That is the thing that we were saying back in that episode. A quick recap. Three Fates Decide podcast. So for the benefit of those of you who are not familiar with the concept, as the name suggests, light novels are a type of novel. This is primarily referring to novels that are from Japan in particular. But basically, the concept of a light novel is that they are a type of novel, but they happen to be on the lower end in terms of word count of what is considered a novel. Another interesting feature that I should mention about light novels is that they actually have a couple of things in common with manga, which for those of you who are not familiar with manga is, please listen to the earlier episode I had done on manga. But basically, with light novels in Japan, not necessarily all light novels are like this, but it's very common for light novels to actually originally be released chapter by chapter in one media, and then Later, it's released in a single volume once some of the individual chapters have already been published. So in that respect, it is pretty similar to how manga is typically released in Japan. With light novels, originally there were pulp magazines that published these individual chapters. And actually, once upon a time, both in the U.S. and in the U.K., there were similar magazines that did the same thing. There were anthologies that would be released every month or a couple times a month, and they would publish individual chapters of multiple stories, and then later they get collected into completed novels. And of course, very famously, Charles Dickens wrote many of his novels in that fashion, actually. In fact, he produced his own fiction anthology where he published not only his novels, but also the works of other writers in that fashion. And it provided a regular income to the authors via the subscriptions. And in a way, it also acted as a sounding board of sorts to see whether or not the reading public would actually pay good money for a completed novel. So in a sense, Japan actually picked up on this literary tradition with their light novels. In modern day, the magazines are no longer the most common way in which light novels are mass produced to the reading public. It's now commonly done through websites. So in a sense, you will have websites that are forums or sites that are pretty similar to things like fanfiction.net or archive of our own where people can publish their stories chapter by chapter. And eventually, once the prospective novel has been completed, it will later get published in a proper book form or as an ebook form as well in collected volumes like manga is also released. And just like with manga, not only are light novels published in chapter by chapter installments, but they are also eventually released in collected volumes. So just like with manga, in international markets, the light novels are released as collected volumes. So how did I get involved in reading these things? 
So it's actually a pretty similar story to how I got involved with reading manga, except in the case of light novels are a very new thing. In fact, I've only actively started reading light novels in the last few months. Like basically towards the end of 2021 was when I actually started really reading them. I had been vaguely aware of light novels because in recent years, actually, there have been new anime series that were released and they'll mention in the credits that this show is based off of a light novel rather than a manga. And that started intriguing me because quite a few of these shows that happen to be based off of a light novel, actually, they turn out to be very good, very complex stories. And then once I discovered that now English translations of these light novels are now available, I got really curious. So I started doing some research and eventually I started picking up a couple of titles based off of the anime series that I actually do enjoy. And I decided, okay, let me give the source material a shot. And one of these titles, which incidentally, I also highly recommend to some of you who are equally curious like I was, one title I started reading and I'm still reading is called Restaurant to Another World. So basically the concept of Restaurant to Another World is, as the title tells you, is that the main driving plot to the series is that there is a mysterious restaurant where five days of the week it is a western cuisine restaurant located in Japan and they happen to be located in a very busy business district where most of the customers are office workers so obviously they will do business Monday to Friday and on the weekends they close however on Saturdays this restaurant will secretly open to customers that are not in Japan, but they are from another world. Hence the title. This series really intrigued me with the concept of a restaurant that serves food to different people who exist in another world. Now, I happen to be somebody who does enjoy stories with fantasy elements, and I was intrigued by it, so I gave the show a shot, and I really enjoy it. It's a blend of fantasy, but it's also got aspects of slice of life as well. And I enjoy the relaxing pace of the show. Now, obviously, if you're the type of person who wants like lots of drama, lots of action, you may not like this show and you may not like reading this light novel series. But if you're somebody who's just stepping your toe in the water, as it were, and you happen to like these kind of stories, then I 100% recommend you give this a shot. One thing I will warn you, though, is that if you were to watch this anime series, you will want to make sure you have some snacks near you because... As I mentioned in the anime episode, anime food is beautifully drawn and looks so amazing that you just wish you could eat this thing that you're seeing on the screen, but you can't because it's animated. So I enjoy the series so much that I decide, okay, let me give the source material a try. And actually, as much as I enjoy the anime, I have to say the light novel in many respects is genuinely better actually than the anime. Now part of it is because in the adaptation process not all the chapters were adapted for the show. I'm being very optimistic and hoping that whenever they actually work on a season three because so far there's two seasons but I'm hoping when they get around to doing season three that they will adapt some of the other stories that they skipped out on. But also what I like about the light novel is that in the anime series, you do get some world building, but in the light novel, you get a lot more world building. There are interesting details that were not included in the anime that you read in the novels and you 
wind up really appreciating the amount of details that get included that really expand the reader's understanding and knowledge of this alternate world that the restaurant connects to. Like you eventually find out how and why does this restaurant even do this? Like how is it able to serve these customers? Which incidentally, because it's connecting to another world, not all the customers are human. So it's really interesting that you do eventually get an explanation, how is this even possible? And you also actually start to better understand how exactly this alternate world works. You start to understand how these different races and different kingdoms of people in this alternate world, like what are their connections, where are their relationships to each other. Because just as in this world, you have people who are allies, people who are rivals, people who are just straight up enemies, you also have the same thing in this alternate world, and you start getting better understanding of these relationships and you get to know these characters who become regular customers to this restaurant and the funny thing is that even though this is a restaurant that just serves food to these disparate groups of people this restaurant is subtly causing almost a revolution of sorts in this other world so without getting into spoilers or anything but Basically, you have different groups of people, different races of people who end up meeting each other at this restaurant all because they are hungry and they want to eat something. They end up interacting with each other in ways where under normal circumstances, they have no reason to even meet each other at all, much less speak to each other. And yet they slowly form friendships with each other. And in a couple of cases, you have people from rival kingdoms who had no particular reason to ever talk to each other end up forming trade agreements and there may or may not even be a marriage that resulted from these casual meetups at this restaurant. And on top of that, because so many dishes served at this restaurant do not exist, in this fantasy world, some of these customers actually have the initiative to try to recreate some of these dishes that they tasted from this restaurant. And along the way, some of these recreations end up creating by themselves a food revolution in this fantasy world. So it's just amazing to me how just through the power of food, just by this restaurant existing and showing up once a week in this alternate world, it's altered so many things to improve the lives of people who exist in this other world. And yet most of the people in this other world will never know this restaurant exists. And it's all because a few lucky random people accidentally discover these portals that give them access to this restaurant. They eat the food there. They bring new concepts and new connections and new relationships back home with them. And they start making all these changes that will hopefully improve the future of all these different countries in this world. And it's honestly a very beautiful concept to me. So I've already read the five volumes that have already been published and translated. I'm currently waiting for the sixth volume to come out because it's been a few months since volume five came out. And I'm very eager to see what happens next. It's unclear from my limited research as to whether this novel series has actually been completed in Japan or if the author is still writing them or if they've just gone on hiatus or quit or whatever. So I really don't know. But I've heard that there's a sixth volume coming out very soon and of course, because I loved this series, it's basically opened the floodgates for me. And now I am constantly on the lookout for new titles to read. And there's another series that I've also caught up on that's also a very fun, amusing title. Now, I have to admit, in some of the volumes, it's 
a little redundant in some respects, but it's entertaining enough to me that I'm actually still reading it, and I'm eagerly awaiting for eventually volume 12, which I hope is a thing altogether. I never saw any official announcements by the English translator slash publisher who obviously has a calendar where they post what titles they're releasing when. And the name of this title is called Campfire Cooking in Another World with My Absurd Skill. Incidentally, for those of you who are not familiar with manga, anime, light novels, what have you, it's not unheard of for Japanese titles to be these really long, wordy titles that, in a sense, spoils what the story is about. But it's also part of the charm. At any rate, this series is a funny series where basically you have a guy who winds up in an alternate world that's a fantasy world and he has to survive being in this new world and all sorts of crazy adventures and all sorts of wackiness ensues. Now this particular title and actually Restaurant to Another World, they both fit a certain subgenre of fantasy that exists in Japan, which is called isekai. And if you're interested in learning more about what isekai actually is, stay tuned. I intend to do another solo episode where I expand on isekai. But as a sort of preview to that upcoming solo episode that you will hear from me very soon, the concept of isekai is basically, like I said, a subgenre within fantasy. The most common translation for the term isekai is otherworld. So in other words, any story that fits within this subgenre of isekai, the commonality is that it involves a character who somehow transported from one world into another one. So one of the most common examples of this would be people from this world, which, since this is Japanese, obviously these would be Japanese people, end up somehow teleported to another world. Hence, Isekai. And again, I will expand upon this a little bit more when I do the Isekai episode, but it's a very fun concept that I personally found myself really interested in reading. And actually, as I kept thinking about it, I'm familiar with some non-Japanese stories that also actually use this isekai concept. But the thing is that there is no term in English for this concept. You just describe the story as, okay, this person somehow got sent to another world of some sort, and that's about it. Meanwhile, in the Japanese context, the moment you use the term isekai, immediately it's understood what the general concept of this story is. So this particular series, Campfire Cooking, is silly in some respects, but it's also fun because, again, you have this guy who gets transported to this fantasy world and he finds out that it's a one-way trip kind of a thing because, of course, naturally there's a lot of magic involved in these situations. The magic involved is involves so much energy that it's basically a one-way ticket. So once they use the spell and they teleport somebody from our world into their world, it's almost impossible to send these people back to where they came from. So now this poor guy has to figure out how to survive in this alternate world for the rest of his life. And in the title, My Absurd Skill, okay, the absurd skill is basically he has this unusual skill. So what happens a lot in these type of stories is that when you get teleported to this alternate world, a lot of times it's a fantasy world. And it's very much inspired by those fantasy RPG games that some of you listeners may be familiar with. Like things like World of Warcraft or the Final Fantasy games, what have you. Sometimes when people get teleported to this alternate world, they end up getting 
access to unusual powers and abilities that make them special when they were probably just ordinary people back home, which is one of the fun parts about these types of fantasy stories. So in the title of this series, the My Absurd Skill part, he does end up with a very unusual skill that at first glance is like kind of a stupid skill that does not make any sense whatsoever. Like you cannot realistically use this to fight monsters. So instead of having, say, like an advanced ability to create and use like fire magic and fire spells or you get like super advanced knowledge of how to fight with a sword or archery or something like that. This guy ends up with a skill called online supermarket. So basically this poor guy has the ability to access something similar to an online supermarket. So you imagine things like, say you were ordering something off a of Trader Joe's website or Fresh Direct or something like Whole Foods, what have you. He has the ability to order stuff on an online supermarket. And when he activates the skill and he looks at the selection of items, it's exactly what it says. It's basically the sort of things that he would be able to order when he's lazy and wants food delivery and he can't be bothered to physically go to a supermarket. It gets shipped to his house in a delivery box. So at first glance, it's a stupid skill. Like how in the world are you expected to survive dealing with monsters and all that with this kind of a skill? And yet somehow he manages to find a unique niche for himself and he is surviving and thriving in this alternate world with this weird skill. And as I said before, there are currently 11 volumes available in English for you to read. And hopefully there is going to be a volume 12 because the way volume 11 ended, there is definitely more potential to this story. There's more that could be told and done with this. But as of yet, there's no official announcement stating that there is more. And that's just the second example. There's quite a few other titles that I've read that I've actually enjoyed. And again, for the sake of brevity, I'm not going to get into what other titles that I enjoy that I would recommend. But if you listeners are interested, I am happy to do a follow-up episode where I talk more about other titles that I am reading and enjoying. So please, if you are interested, leave a comment, let me know, and you may hear from me again talking about those titles. Thank you, and see you next time. Thanks for listening, everyone. Catch us next time and see what we're going to talk about. Because the three fates decide.